What's up guys? I'm Nick. I'm Paige. And this is Build Dad Build. A place where sometimes stuff's just got to get done. Okay, so Paige wants some Christmas stuff. Um, we have a we have a wall hanging that my mother made us uh, for our other house that we used to have hanging up on a wall. We don't have any place to hang it in this house, so we decided that we were going to make a little dowel rod hanger thingy mm -hmm. for it, which probably won't be super interesting. But I figured we'd just kind of run through the process real quick. Um, two notes: we uh, we did have one of these hooks. And we needed a second one, so I left it up to Paige to order another hook from Amazon, and this is what came. <laughs> that first one did not come from Amazon. <laughs> anyway, fortunately, two of these came, so we're going to just make do with what we got here. It's not going to be as big and bulky as I would like, but not a big deal. It'll work. <laughs> it will work. Yes. So the game plan is to take this doll, which I had burnt for a previous video and it's just been kind of been laying in the corner, and uh, we're gonna cut it down just a little bit. We're gonna take a one by six. We're gonna we're gonna burn that as well. We're gonna mount these hooks to it, and then we are going to hang said doll on the hooks, and then the wall tapestry hangy thing will hang in between it. That. Shouldn't take too long, but Paige wanted to come out in the shop. She wanted to use the saw. I do. Which, I don't know, but we're gonna let her. First time for everything. <laughs> um, so we're gonna cut that down, and then the other thing she would, wants to make, which will probably be more of the thumbnail, which you're seeing, is a uh, a box to go around the Christmas tree. You want to explain that a little bit? Instead of a tree skirt, it's just a little wooden box that kind of hides the base of the tree and still looks pretty and is less open to being messed with by toddlers and puppies. Yay! And we have both. <coughs> so right now we have a very ugly four prong bars just sitting out under our tree. You can just see the bottom of the tree. So ugly. Um, what we're going to do is take two one by sixes, stack them on top of each other. I right, just put it together with some pocket screws and then we're gonna make it hinged so it'll fold up when we're not using it. We don't have a lot of extra space for that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then I, we're gonna dye it, what are we gonna dye it? Like a white and a red or a yeah. green and a red? I want some snowflakes carved in it. Oh shit. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about the snowflakes. <laughs> so uh, apparently we're gonna carve some snowflakes in it. And then what are we gonna do? So we're gonna do it all one color and... We're gonna do red with white snowflakes, maybe? Okay. All right, good to know, good to know. All right, so first things first, we're gonna get all the lumber cut, uh, and then I gotta figure out this carving situation, uh, and we will go from there. We're gonna head over to the table saw. We are going to put on lots of protective gear, and then we're gonna let Paige cut something. Alright, so you want it 66 inches? Yes. Alright, so we're gonna bring this down here. Mm -hmm. Draw yourself a little line right there. And then what do we do after that? We need to measure it again. That's right. So I always just come back and make sure that I'm on it. Okay. Alright, and then you're gonna take this guy, mm -hmm. make sure that this is flat against there, and then draw your line. Alright, so first things first, we gotta put those bad boys on. We gotta protect them peepers. Haha. Mm, Alright. Okay, so keys to a straight cut on the miter saw is first you wanna make sure that your board is flat against the fence. This is the fence. Uh, this is dimensional lumber from the big box store, so we're trusting that it's already straight. And then uh, we do have a laser line here, but we're cutting on the opposite side of the blade. So we're going to bring it down and just make sure that we are hitting that line where we want to hit it. So the line is right here, and I'm just going to drop the blade down and I'm going to look to make sure that this, that it's going to bite right there. <clears throat> this is the part that we're getting rid of. This is the part we're keeping. So we just come right down like that. So how hard do I push? Uh, 
not very hard. Okay. <laughs> um, you don't have to push it very hard. The, the, the blade will do all the work for you. You're gonna, just gonna come straight down and you just, once you start biting into the wood, you're gonna go, 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 until you go all the way through, and then you're going to, and then you're gonna stop the blade before you lift it up, okay? Now how do I do that? So you have a two-part trigger system here. You've got this button, mm -hmm. and then you've got the trigger, which is back behind here. I can't pull that trigger without pushing this button. Okay. So that'll go, this won't. This doesn't do anything. This is the lock for it. Okay, so you're gonna put this down, you're gonna pull that, and then you're just gonna sink it to the wood. Okay. Okay? And just go slow. Let her rip. Not go all the way through on the edge. Not go all the way. <laughs> okay, don't no, no, no. Okay. Don't ever start a cut inside the wood. So you're just gonna so you're gonna start it back up and you're gonna bring it back down again. And just bring it all the way down and so you can't bring it down again. Are we still like getting all the way through there? Right. No. Well then we're gonna have to do this. Okay, so now this is gonna pull out. Okay. Okay, so now we just turn it on again, bring it down. Woo! Woohoo! Board cut. Okay, now for this next one, what we're gonna do is <clears throat> you want a box that's gonna be two one by sixes tall. Yes. And then it's gonna have sides on it. The front is 24 inches. Yes. And, and then each side is going to be 18 inches. Fortunate enough <clears throat> to be working with something that's kind of relative in its dimensions. So this isn't something that has to be exactly 24 inches. No. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this first board and we're going to use this board to cut the second board. Okay. Okay. And it's a little easier to do that when it's a relative measurement because if you take a little bit of this first board off and it ends up being 23 and and 31, 30 seconds, it's gonna to be totally fine. All right, so we've got our 224s and then we've got our 418s. This is gonna, we're gonna burn this because that's what I do. Uh, but, so I'm, I'm not concerned with the fact that this is, uh, this is already cupped a little bit. We'll take care of that. It'll be a little rustic looking anyway, mm -hmm. uh, just because of the burn. So we're totally good on that, but we're gonna come back to this now because apparently I have to carve some things. And the dog wants in. And the dog wants in. So let's get to working on the hanger. First. Okay. Okay. Um, one thing is we are going to cut a doll. Mm -hmm. I am going to cut that because okay. it's round. Okay. Um, baby steps. Baby steps. All right. So we're going to get the big torch out. You're going to burn stuff. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to burn this? Sure. Okay. Trigger makes fire. Okay. okay. We're just gonna burn this end. Okay. Okay. You just need to make it dark. Okay. All right. Okay. Dark. Perfect. All right. Okay. You are not ready for the grill blazer yet. All right. Baby, baby steps with the torch too. Okay, so this is the end the fire comes out of. I got that part. Um, but basically we're gonna light you up. Just lighter. That's gonna be great for audio, by the way. Um, so you're just gonna give it a little bit of gas. Mm -hmm. You'll light it. And then you're gonna give it the beans. All right. Uh, you wanna stay about, I would say 10 to 12 inches away. Mm -hmm. It'll just burn a little bit better that way. Um, and, and get what you can, I'll come in and do the rest. Don't crawl at me. Okay.
All right, we have burned, we have brushed, we have wiped this down with a little bit of water, take the soot off. Yes. And then how far in do we want three, the hooks? I want them in three inches. Three inches? Yes. And while the Danish oil is drying on that rack dealing my bopper, uh, we went ahead and stenciled snowflakes on the boards. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and route these out and then we will we'll get to building the box. Uh, we're in the house now, it's the next day. Paige had to go to work. So you get to watch my fat ass put this thing up. But uh, we're gonna hang this on that wall. Second thought, I think we're gonna scrap the hinges because they don't orient right. So let's say like this, the hinge would have to be on the inside. The hinge would have to be here flat and that's like this, like this. Wait a second, I can't even figure this out now. <laughs> the hinges have to be here and then come in and if you see when it does that this the hinge part is pinched underneath there so i don't think that's the best way to do this i think we're going to stick with the static box i think it's going to be just easier it'll be a little bit more of a pain to store we'll have to find a place for it but these aren't going to work and honestly i don't want to get more hinges so um let's do that I, yeah the folding in I'm sure there's a specific kind of hinge that would work that way. If you guys know what kind of hinge that is, let me know. But like in order for this to fold in the hinge, the mechanism, like I'd have to route a groove or something and I don't want to mess with that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we don't want this box to look brand new, right? We want it to look kind of weathered and old and like it's been around for a while. So we're going to start Build Dad Build's three-step process, patent pending. First, we're going to beat the crap out of this stuff. We're just going to hit with a hammer and whatever else I can grab and, uh, and just kind of mar it up a little bit. Then we're going to light it on fire and then we're going to dye it. Patent pending. So please allow me to welcome you to Aggression Therapy 101. So last time we did kind of a deep burn. This time we're gonna do more of a surface burn. We really just wanna get like a little bit more contrast in the grain. All 
All right, two things to know. One, I can't say this enough, when this unicorn spit gets to this kind of dull color, this chalky color, that just means it's dry. It's supposed to do that. So don't think that's, that is, don't think you just lost that cool red color because it will come back as soon as we finish this. The other thing is, when you look at this, what does it need? That's right, it needs some more stank on it. Ah! So don't be afraid to, even after you've already put your gel stain on, to come in here and just like, give it a little love right there, right? And what I'm doing, look at that, much better, right? So now we're getting a little bit more detail in there. Get your edges a little bit. And just remember, if you feel like you did a little too much, you can always go back and hit it back with some more stain. But what I'm doing is I'm finding the places where I didn't, I, I didn't get enough stain on, and I'm just emphasizing those little heat. Come in here. And you see that good grain pattern, you can come in here and do that. Always, always looks good on the edges. A little corner action. Everything you expected? It is. I love it. It is perfect. <laughs> so aside from the fact that I didn't make it hinged, mm -hmm. um, like it, it came out pretty well. I think I think it's better not being hinged. Honestly, I think it'd be more of a it would be a little rickettier, rickettier, rickettier no. without that. But uh, I like the way it turned out. I can see that. We'll see. Uh... We'll see when it comes to putting everything away. <laughs> well, I think it'll go good in a corner and then mm -hmm. stuff can stack around it. That's true. But I love, I love the color, the snowflakes, and the base of the tree no longer looks janky. Yes. No jankiness. No jankiness. No jankiness. Uh, and then I guess uh, I guess you're also digging your, your wall hanging. I am. That wall was so empty and ugly and now it has stuff. All right. But this video is going to be super long because there was kind of two projects in it. So I don't want to take any more of your guys' time. Hi, Sugi. <laughs> uh, so I'd just like to say, uh, say thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, do me a favor and hit that like button if you like this video or you want to see more page. Uh, subscribe if you definitely want to see more page. And thank you to all of my patrons. I'd like to shout out our newest patron, Rustic Frank. And Chaz Thompson has upped his patronage to the Boilermaker level. So here's a special shout out to all my Boilermakers out there. Nick the Greek, Stephen Mann, Eric Easy E Weiss. I have to write them down now, there's too many. Derek Coates, Caveman Ross, Chuck Faulkner, The Weekend DIYer, Puffy Muffins, and Chaz Thompson. Clinkies. All right, babe, and this is when I say, thanks for playing. Keep making shit. Now we gotta get to work. All right, guys, on this episode, we're gonna do things a little bit different. Paige has some stuff she needs done. I want some Christmas stuff. Some Christmas stuff. I want to make some Christmas stuff. And we're gonna pause it for a second because these assholes can't stop weed whacking. <laughs> and Chaz Thompson. Just push straight down. On the top? Mm -hmm. Okay, let it up and just go like kind of a little faster. A little harder? That's good enough. You want to make it pop a little bit, don't you? Yeah, I want to make it pop a little bit. Okay, well then you got to do it harder. So it's 
So can I push down here and do it? Yeah. You just not gotta go pressure. straight down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna make a pop noise. Two-handed. <laughs> okay, you're gonna push holes through it. Okay. <laughs>